Today we are going to talk about nutrients, more specifically limiting nutrients, their control over phytoplankton population dynamics, and how our human activities have been changing these controls. But before we get started, can you think of a location near you that experiences high levels of nutrient runoff and pollution? What about a location that seems fairly pristine, with little to no exposure to human activities? Are there any noticeable differences between these locations? Discuss with your peers in the discussion board. Humans have greatly influenced the amount of nutrients present in our lakes, rivers, and estuaries. These inputs usually come through the application of agricultural fertilizers or through sewage effluent, which can drastically alter nitrogen and phosphorus concentrations in both marine and freshwater systems. For example, excess nitrogen levels helped drive the start of the Wellfleet Oyster Project. One significant consequence of excess nutrients is called harmful algal blooms, or HABs. HABs are explosive blooms of algae that are particularly harmful to the environment. They can harm or lead to the death of specific organisms due to their toxic nature, create such large masses that it physically blocks sunlight that would normally be used by submerged aquatic vegetation, and remove oxygen from water as it decomposes. This can lead to fish kills, which can be significant from both an ecological and economic standpoint. HABs can also affect you. Many bivalve species that we eat, such as oysters and clams, are filter feeders. They may ingest some toxic species, which could potentially stay in the meat as we ingest it. But don't worry too much, many of these diseases and poisonings are closely monitored. Nonetheless, it's very clear that nutrients play a major role in how marine and freshwater ecosystems operate. So to start, let me ask you this. Why do you think these algal blooms respond so explosively when we add nutrients? Correct. It's not because they are limited by sunlight or carbon dioxide. Remember, algae photosynthesize to create their own food. It's because they are nutrient limited. If they don't have a sufficient amount of nutrients to grow, they will no longer grow. If, however, assuming they have enough sunlight, we add nutrients, they will continue to grow because they have the resources they need to do so. The three nutrients we are concerned with in coastal systems are nitrogen, phosphorus, and silica, typically in the forms of nitrate, phosphate, and silicic acid. But it's not just the amount of nutrients that determine how much phytoplankton will grow. More importantly, it's the proportion of nutrients. So nutrient limitation means that the required nutrient composition is out of balance. This idea was influenced by a chemist, Justice von Liebig, who stated that population growth will not be limited by the total amount of resources available, but by the scarcest one. This is called Liebig's law of the minimum. We can further explore Liebig's law of the minimum with the metaphor of Liebig's barrel. Here we have a barrel with staves, these wooden planks, of different lengths, each corresponding to a different nutrient. Regardless of the size of the barrel, it can only hold as much water as allowed by the shortest of the staves. So what nutrient do you think is limiting in this system? Magnesium, nitrogen, phosphorus, or silica? Correct. We can see here that if any of the nutrients are proportionally deficient, then growth will be stunted, regardless of the availability of the other nutrients. In this case, nitrogen is our limiting nutrient. 